Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry I can't be with you today. I have a different appointment today, but I wanted to make sure you guys saw today's Check It Out. Um, so welcome to Check It Out for November. And let's get started. And we're going to turn our slides real quick. And for those of you that do not know me, my name is Janae jackson Doring. I'm the Youth Services Consultant with the State Library of Iowa. There's my information below, my email and my phone. Um, please call me if you have any youth related questions, concerns, or you can email me as well. I love going out to visit your library and I do bring goodie bags of books with me. Um, so please contact me for any youth related questions or concerns. So our plan today, our plan for Check It Out, this is our plan. We have story time standouts, which everybody's like, what are story time standouts? Story time standouts are the best books to use for story times. So we'll cover our story time standouts. We'll examine second and third grade chapter books. We'll also share early readers, picture books and board book roundup, children and teen nonfiction. We'll look at middle grade fiction, teen fiction, graphic novels and mangas. And I'll also share some giveaways, what I'm reading and upcoming events. So let's get started. Okay, our first section is story time standouts. These are what I consider the best books to use for story time. And I just have one for you this month. And this is a board book and it's called Snow, 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 a Christmas time song. This is written and illustrated by Sandra Boynton. And this is a gem, a fun gem for a holiday story time. In this story, the bear, moose, and pig are singing the song, Oh, oh, there is snow, 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 it's coming down, 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 and it is falling, falling, falling all around, round, round. And while they're singing the song, they're putting ornaments on the tree, sledding down the hill, and they're just having fun. The song is so simple and fun and repetitive, and you could use this song and the book for a toddler story time or a preschool story time. If you put out some egg shakers or bells to move and wiggle to the book and the song, you'll have a fun time with this book. So make sure you grab Snow, 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 a Christmas time song. The other thing I wanted to add is that at the bottom of your screen, I wanted to add the link to the song and video. Um, Sandra put the video on YouTube. So there's the link if you'd like to watch it as well. Okay, we are going to go next to second and third grade chapter books. My first selection is called Drag and Rex, Forever Friends. This is the first book in the series. It is written by Susan Lubner and illustrated by Blythe Russo. This received a starred review in Kirkus, and this is about two friends, Drag the Dragon and Rex, a T-Rex. These two are sweet and silly best friends. Drag is dreamy, literal, and kind of impulsive, and sometimes a bit scatterbrained. While Rex is dapper, he's methodical, practical, but sometimes he can be a little bit stuffy. The two have differences like friends do, but they are both gentle and caring and they are the best friends for each other. This book has three chapters where kids can see how the friends decide what to have for breakfast, how to make the best of a snowy day, or how to face down something scary. I loved the silliness and the humor in the book. The illustrations are colorful and cozy, and this would be a good read alike if you are encountering children who are done reading the Frog and Toad series. If they want something similar to that, definitely grab Drag and Rex. Our next book in the series is called 
Mercy Watson is Missing, and it is part of a series, and this is the final book in the Mercy Watson series. This is written by Kate DiCamillo and illustrated by Chris Van Dusen, and this received a starred review in Booklist. In the final book, Mercy the Beloved Pig goes missing, and the Watson family is devastated. They've told the whole town and the whole neighborhood is in search of the beloved pig. Also, even bumbling private investigator Percival Smidgley, he, he even tries to find the pig. But it takes a trio of clever neighborhood sleuths that follow a trail of little hoofs, hoof prints and a lovely delicious aroma to find and recover mercy. This is a funny and clever story with each spread in each chapter has color illustrations and black and white illustrations to balance it out. Um, if you have fans of the Mercy Watson series, you want to make sure you grab this for your collection. Okay, we are going to move now to early readers. And I just have one early reader for you this month. This is called Words Are Magic. And this is written by Zelia Avant Gard and illustrated by Felicia Watley. I'm going to move my camera there. There we go. This received a starred review in School Library Journal. And the words say Words are magic. Have you heard? Pick a letter, make a word. Zalia is the Scripps National Spelling Bee champion, and she has created a delightful early reader series for kids. Each page in the story has one or two simple sentences posted, and kids are encouraged to look for the words in the illustrations and spell out the words. The illustrations in this book are warm, whimsif whimsical, and colorful. This would be a great addition to your early reader, or if you call it beginning reader, this would be a wonderful addition to your early reader or beginning reader collection. Okay, we are going to move now to picture books and board book roundup. My first selection is 10 Little Rabbits. I'm gonna move that there. This is written and illustrated by Maurice Sendik. This is a, this received starred reviews in School Library Journal and Publishers Weekly. This picture book is about a young man who's a magician and he has lots of rabbits that come out of the hat. How many rabbits? 10 rabbits. So readers are encouraged to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. They count up to 10 and then count back down from 10 to one. Very simple counting book, fun for kids. Definitely pick up 10 Little Rabbits. Our next book, I'm gonna move my camera here. This is called Down the Hole. This is written by Scott Slater and illustrated by Adam Ming. This is a fun kind of trickster tale. And when a suspiciously polite fox attempts to coax his next meal out of a burrow, he is met with a clever rabbit who has been cooking up a surprise for him this very moment. Fox sat down next to the hole. This was no accident. He had won this many times before. There were bunnies in that hole. Not as many as there used to be, of course, but there were still a few left. The rabbit is planning a party and a trap for our so-called clever fox. And from the rabbit's coaxing, the, the fox, he gets him to jump, jump, jump. And the fox jumps right into a hole where a bear is ready for his dinner. Um, this is a clever tale. It's a sneaky trickster tale. I love the color illustrations. It's very fun. It's very engaging. And kids really have to look at the illustrations to pay attention to see how this rabbit tricks the fox. Um, I especially love the, the image of the fox when he slides down and the bear's just grinning ear to ear with his 
tongue hanging out. Um, so definitely pick up down the hole. Our next book is a board book, and this is called Barn in Winter, Safe and Warm on the Farm. This is written by Chambray Griffith and illustrated by Taya Morley. This is a beautifully illustrated book, um, but the words say, barn feels a chill. Her weather vane spins. She braces her beams. A snowstorm begins. This is the start of the story where preschoolers can see where the cow, pig, goat, dog, and hen stay during the winter in this cozy rhyming story. Each spread, you have to find where the, where the animal is. So it'll say, where's the hen? And then the next page will show, shows the animal out of the storm, safe, dry, and warm. And I love these illustrations. It's very cozy. I love the use of the vocabulary in the in this story. Um, pre preschoolers will learn the words dozy, dreamy, snuggly, snoozy. Um, this is a great addition to a for a farm animals themed winter story time or just a winter story time in general. It's great for one on one sharing before bedtime or during a snowy day. And we have two, I'm gonna move my camera again so you guys can see. We have two different board books on this page here. The first one is Snow. It's a board book by Leslie Patricelli. I love Les Leslie Patricelli's work. Um, and it's just very cozy, fun. You have a little boy and another little boy learning how to play in the snow. They just go sledding. They have hot chocolate. It's a wonderful, wonderful, simple way to tell kids how to play in the snow, things you wear in the snow. Very fun, very simple, easy board book to read for toddlers or preschoolers. The book to your right is called Learn and Explore Alphabet, and it's illustrated by Alessandra Santelli. Each spread has the letter and several different items that begin with that letter. So S is for strawberries and snakes. B is for bicycles and bread. D is for dogs and donuts. So you'll see all different kinds of things that begin with each letter of the alphabet. All the pictures are engaging. They're eye-catching illustrations perfect for children to point and look. There's also sensory items in the book where kids are encouraged to touch and feel the pages. So definitely pick up these if you're needing to have replacements in your board book collection. Okay, we are gonna move to children and teen nonfiction. My first pick is called Thank a Farmer. Now I'm going to move my camera for you just so that we guys can see everything. This is written by Maria Jan Ferrari and illustrated by Monica Mackay. This received a star review in School Library Journal. And this is a great picture book because it's a thank you to all kinds of farmers. This book shows the importance of agriculture in our day-to-day -day lives and traces the food and clothing that a family uses back to the people who harvested and created them. The illustrations are outstanding in this book. They're very vibrant, colorful, eye-catching, and I love how it shows all types of diverse farmers. The back of this book features a further reading, reading section with different websites and articles for viewing. The next book I have for you on the list is called Attacked, Pearl Harbor and the Day War Came to America. This is written by Mark Favreau. This received a starred review in Publishers Weekly. And I'm gonna move my camera right there. There you go. 
This gripping narrative is told through the stories of the survivors who experienced the attack on Pearl Harbor and its after effects firsthand. This book also sheds new light with interviews from Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Japanese individuals and their stories on that day. This book includes a timeline for research, research, excuse me, um, source notes, further reading, and an index. If you're looking to purchase new books to beef up your history section, um, this would be an excellent resource. And this book is geared for ages 10 to 14. Our next book is called Plague Busters, Medicine's Battles with History's Deadliest Diseases. This is written by Lindsay Fitzharris and Adrian Teal. This received a starred review from School Library Journal, and this book delves into several illnesses that have, that have infected humans and affected civilizations. Each chapter explores the history of a specific disease, detailing the symptoms, cures, and medical breakthroughs that it spawned. The chapters are short, and it talks about each ailment, and it, talks, it has anecdotes on what life was like as the disease was inflicting the hum human population, or how the terrible symptoms were endured by sufferers. Readers can learn about when the disease originated, and each chapter ends with a section on a famous individual that died from the disease. I uh, simply put, this is a gross read because if you like if you like germs and diseases, this this might be a, this might be your jam, or it might be a child's jam. Um, so it is kind of gross, just a heads up. Um, but it does feature illustrations, sources, um, a further reading section, and an index. Uh, School Library Journal said this is geared up for sixth grades and up. Okay, we are going to move to middle grade. And I have one section, or excuse me, one book for you today for middle grades. This is called The Sky Over Rebecca. This is written by Matthew Fox, and it received starred reviews from Booklist and Publishers Weekly. And this is a historical fiction novel, and it focuses on Kara. She's 10 years old, and she enjoys being in the snow in her Swedish hometown with her mom and grandmother. But she yearns to have a friend. She wants to have, have friends to play with. And she finds, while she's outside, these mysterious tracks in the snow. And she's wondering where they lead. So she follows the tracks only to realize that it takes her across time and back into modern day, from modern day Sweden into 1942 Germany. While she has time traveled, she meets two siblings, Rebecca, who's a Jewish girl, and her younger brother, Samuel. The two siblings are trying to hide from the Nazis. And Rebecca has to decide how to help them. Uh, this historical novel, it quietly builds suspense for readers while exploring themes of compassion and friendship. So definitely pick up The Sky Over Rebecca by Matthew Fox. Okay, we are going to switch gears and go to teen fiction. The first book on my list is Murtaugh. It is written by Christopher Paolini. And this is part of the Aragon world or universe. And this focuses on Aragon's brother, Murtaugh, who is a dragon rider. It also, for those who are not familiar with the series, you, it is recommended that you read the beginning of the whole Aragon trilogy. So make sure when you're talking about this book, tell readers to make sure that they read the whole Aragon series. Um, so Aragon's brother, Murtaugh, is hated. He's alone. He's exiled from 
from the town, especially because he's on the run from on the run after Galbatroy, the person that he was working with, was stopped. So Murtaugh and his dragon, Thorn, have to decide what to do when he stands and what he stands for in a world that has abandoned him when there's all of a sudden a new enemy emerging from the shadows of Alagizia. This book has a lot of world building and fantasy. If you have fantasy, fantasy enthusiasts and they really love the world of Aragon, definitely hand them Murtaugh. Our next book is called The Space Between Here and Now. This is written by Sarah Souk. This received starred reviews in Book Page and in Publishers Weekly. This is about 17-year-old Amy Rowe. Amy has a rare condition that causes her to travel back to a moment in her life when she smells something linked to that memory. She has what's called sensory time warp syndrome. It's a condition that causes her to physically travel back in time to certain memories when exposed to specific triggers. In this case, when she smells something linked to a memory, she, is, she has to journey back to Korea to discover the truth about this certain memory. Um, this book mixes science fiction with a little bit of romance, if you have teens that like science fiction, give them this book, The Space Between Here and Now by Sarah Souk. For you mystery fans out there, The Rosewood Hunt is my next pick. This is written by Mackenzie Reed, and it received a starred review in Publishers Weekly. This cat and mouse mystery focuses on Lily. She is 17 years old. She is part of the Rosewood family, and she aspires to follow in her ancestors' footsteps in creating clothing. Her grandmother owned the family's luxury coat company, and she died unexpectedly. So it's clear, it's unclear, excuse me, who will run the company. Lily's father is missing, and her mother has died. And so Lily moves in with her uncle and her cousin Daisy, who is a social media star. But the teens stumble on clues, clues that Lily's grandmother left. And all of these teens have to work together to figure out what these clues stand for. And so they're going around the town on a treasure hunt to find out what these clues lead to. And what it leads to is someone that, once someone solves the clues, they could be inheriting the Rosewood estate. Uh, but Lily is realizing that this treasure hunt is becoming more and more dangerous. This is an action-packed mystery novel with themes of complicated family dynamics. You have a best, uh, best friends to rivals to lovers kind of story. And it's all centered around this high stakes treasure hunt. If you had fans of the inheritance games, definitely you could recommend this read alike to them. Give them the Rosewood hunt. Okay, we are gonna switch gears again and we're turning to now graphic novels and manga. Our first book on the list, and I'm gonna move my camera just a little bit. There you go. Is called A Kane Banashi Volume One. This is a teen manga written by Yuki Tsunaga and illustrated by Takamasa Mu. This received a star review in School Library Journal, and rightfully so. I loved this book. Uh, this book is about a cane. She unintentionally stirs up a scandal when she's discovered taking informal lessons from her father's former teacher, Shiguma Arakawa. Her father, seven years ago, was studying to be a master storyteller, but on the day of his examination, he was expelled with the other, uh, other uh, test, test takers, if you will but never given a reason why they were expelled. 
And a cane saw him on stage, saw him as he was performing and saw when he got expelled and she never forgot that memory. And she was super mad. And she decided that she one day was going to be a master storyteller. And seven, the story fast forward seven years later and you see a cane begin her first steps in climbing the ranks of becoming a performer uh, from a Yenza opening act to a Shinuchi headliner. Um, and she's still exchanging her secret lessons for formal training. But she's, mind you, she's only a high schooler. So while she's learning this training, she has to learn how to navigate high school and navigate relationships when, with Shiguma's existing apprentices who all don't want to teach her. And all while learning that to be a stellar storyteller, it takes more than just good, good performing or being good at performing. Um, I adored this book. The illustrations are black and white. It is a traditional manga, so readers will have to start at the begin, start at the end of the book and read from right to left. Uh, super fun. It was it's a clean manga. If you're looking for clean mangas, this would be a perfect fit. Um, I love how Akane was very strong and very brave. And she's willing to do whatever it takes to learn how to be a great storyteller. Um, so if you're looking for man more mangas to beef up your manga collection, or just to start a manga collection, start with Akane Banashi Volume 1. Our next book is called Unordinary Volume 1. This is a teen manga, and it's written and illustrated by Yuru Chan. Now, I say this is a teen manga, but it is not a traditional manga. I'm going to explain specifically what I mean. This book is a webtoon, and Yuru Chan created this. It started out as a comic on webtoons.com, and this has been published into a, into a book but this is just a regular story using manga inspired artwork. So it's not a traditional manga where you start at the end of the book. This one, you will have to start at the beginning. So I just wanna make that clear for uh, those who are watching this. But this is an action packed superhero series. And like I said, it started out as a comic on webtoons.com. And that's where manga artists and creators can publish their series online. So a lot of people have been following this series that way. This new book starts uh, and it focuses on John. He's a boy that just transferred to a new high school and all of the students at the high school have superpowers. And at the school, your superpowers dictate your social status. He's just trying to get through school. He's just trying to be an ordinary teen. But what they don't know is that he also has powers. He has mega powers. They are so strong that they are off the charts, but he has to keep all of this secret. And learning John's secret past could bring down the whole social, whole social order of the school. Um, this book is infused with sci-fi and fantasy elements. It is a well-paced story. And the manga artwork is just awesome. It's very vibrant. It felt like a teen, a, a very teen read. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So grab Unordinary Volume 1. Okay, this is called Duel. This is a middle grade uh, graphic novel written by Jessica Bagley and illustrated by Aaron Bagley. This received a star review in Publishers Weekly. And the first thing I'm gonna tell you, and I'm gonna say it, I'm God. I just wanted to say that, I just, you can't help it. Um, this book is about two sisters, Lucy and Gigi. They are biracial sisters. They don't get along. I mean, come on, do you know any sisters that get along? And they are fencers. Their father taught them fencing before he died unexpectedly. And ever since his death, things haven't been the same between the two sisters. And their mom is constantly trying to stop them from arguing, stop them from fighting. 
And so both of them are going to the same middle school. And Gigi is popular. She's in eighth grade. She knows the school. And Lucy is starting sixth grade. But Gigi decides to humiliate Lucy on her first day of school by tripping her in the cafeteria. Once Lucy is tripped, she snaps. She gets mad and she pulls out her fencing duel and challenges her older sister to a duel. If Gigi wins, Lucy will stay out of her way. If Lucy wins, Gigi will stop bullying her. This was a very cool graphic novel because it captured perfectly how the sibling rivalry between sisters. Um, it explored siblings' grief. It explored forgiveness. And the cool thing, readers will learn about fencing because each chapter opens up with a fencing tip or technique. Um, and it's from uh, their dad's fencing book. So definitely pick up Duel. Okay, I'm gonna move my camera because we have a series alert. There are a lot of books that are coming out this month um, that are part of series that I really wanted you guys to make sure that they're on your radar. Um, the first book on the top left is Cat Kid Comic Club. Uh, book five is out and it's called Influencers. And this is written and illustrated by Dave Pilkey. And in this installment of the popular series, the Cat Kid Comic, Comic Book Club is in crisis and they're anxious because one of their comics is going to be published, but they are kind of scared. They're kind of wondering if they have what it takes. Um, this is going to be a popular book, Cat Kid Comic Club, along with Dog Man. All of those books are super popular, so you want to make sure you get that on your cart for Baker and Taylor. The book underneath Cat Kid is called Big Nate, This Means War. This is written and illustrated by Lincoln Pierce, and it is going to be released on March 5th, 2024. So you still got some time to put it in your cart. But with Big Nate, this version of This Means War has over 170 full color comics. And we all know Big Nate. Big Nate is the all-time leader in getting into detention. Um, and he's never far from a spotlight. But in this book, he gets a freak injury on the soccer field. He has a Halloween costume fail and just having long one running rivalry with his grade grubbing Gina or his teacher nemesis, Mrs. Godfrey. So definitely pick up Big Nate, this means war. And also out now this month is called our book, The Bad Guys, Look Who's Talking. This is book 18. Yes, book 18 of the popular series. And it's written and illustrated by Aaron Blabby. And the tagline for this, the tagline says, forget what you know. This book changes everything. Someone on the bad guys team has found their voice and she has a lot to tell you. If you have kids that are asking for bad guys and they can't get enough, make sure you get the next one on your series in the series. The bad guys, look who's talking. And we also, I'm gonna move my camera again so that way you guys can see. We have a teen series alert. Um, if you have not heard of Heartstoppers, please check out Heartstoppers. It is so good. This is written and illustrated by Alice Oseman. Um, Alice is up to number five. And this is a very, very popular series with teens LGBT, and it's part of the LGBTQ community. Um, this is going to be released December 19th. And our two characters, Nick and Charlie, we have seen them grow in their love. Um, they have finally told each other, I love you. And they want to take their relationship to the next level. But Nick is going off to university next year. And Charlie is trying to figure out how to come to terms with that. Um, so definitely pick up Heartstopper, Volume 5, written and illustrated by Alice Oseman. 
and I'm going to move my camera. I'll just make sure you guys can see. Oh, a lot of you have asked, how do I get free advanced reader copies or ARCs as they are called? Um, I saw this opportunity a couple weeks ago, and I wanted to make sure that everyone knew about it. This is uh, Publishers Weekly's Grab a Galley Winter Spring 2024 um, contest. What it is, is Publishers Weekly, they received 200, I, re I repeat, 200 new titles, and they are... Um, for winter and spring of 2024. So they have not been published yet, but on at the bottom of your screen, there is a website. C copy that website into your browser. You'll go to this website. And what you'll do is you'll sc scroll through the titles in, in each category, and you can add copies of galleys to your virtual swag bag. There's no limit to the number that you can select, and you can remove galleys from your bag at any time. So when, when you select all the free galleys that you want, you'll click view swag bag on the navigation bar and then click enter to win now. And then you fill out the form, their online form, and you just submit it. Um, it's a very, very cool thing. It's a, just a cool contest. I have entered it before and the number of free advanced reader copies I received, it was amazing. I I was just blown away. So I wanted to make sure this was on your radar and that you guys knew about it. Um, so definitely go to this website below and enter. And speaking of giveaways, I, it is giveaway time. Woo -woo. <laughs> um, since I could not be with you today for check it out, and usually in the past I've done three winners for a check it out prize book bag. This month's going to be different. I'm going to give away four check it out prize book packs. So four winners will re receive a check it out prize book pack from me. Um, all packs will be sent via Iowa Shares to you. And I just wanted to say congratulations to the following October winners. Taylor Donnelly from H.J. Nugent Public Library of New London. Laura Molers from Marion Public Library. And Bailey Miller of Leon Public Library. Congratulations and thank you for watching the Check It Out. So... Now it's time to tell you what I've been reading lately or what I'm going to be starting to read. Uh, I have two books that I have checked out. The first one is called The Cardboard Kingdom, Snow and Sorcery. This is book three of the children's graphic novel series. And this is written and illustrated by Chad Sell. Um, if you're familiar with the series, this is a fun, fun series for kids. Uh, it's very creative, very imaginative. Uh, the thing I really like about this series is that kids can, it tells them to build their imaginations and use their creativity to build things, especially out of cardboard. You can make anything out of cardboard. And the last two books, the kids have created their own cardboard kingdoms. Um, in this third installment, the Cardboard Kingdom Kids they want to make new friends during winter break. And they see these, these other group of kids hanging out at a park during winter break. But the evil sorceress on their team, in their group, is stopping them from making new friends. Um, so that book is going to explore those themes of friendship and making new friends and the, the jealousy that might come with it. Um, this next book... I am checking out tomorrow because this is on my account. Um, this is a horror, Betwixt, a horror manga anthology. This is an adult manga, if you have an adult manga section. Uh, this is edited by Fawn Lau and Mayuko Hirao. And this is an anthology, and it's a mixture of Japanese tales of ghosts and creatures who exist alongside us. Um, I... As you know, I love horror um, and I'm getting into more and more manga. And so I am going to check that out to see what it's all about.
And I'm going to move my camera just so that you guys can see. Summer is coming up and we have so many learning opportunities this year for your summer library program. I really wanted to make sure everyone felt comfortable and ready to go uh, and just prepared with all the things that are coming from the state library. Um, if you get a chance, please check our website out. We have on our page, we have the video on how to download and access the resource guide and graphics. You can also view that on YouTube, on our State Library of Iowa's YouTube page. Uh, November 29th, which is a couple days from now, we're going to have our first early bird summer reading planning virtual training from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. If you are available, please register on Iowa Learns, and that way you can learn all about the new different crafts and activities for uh, Read, Renew, Repeat for 2024. A new thing that I'm trying as well, um, December 12th and January 9th, we will offer summer reading office hours. And what that is, is if you're stuck on summer reading, if you don't know what to plan or what kind of craft would work, or, hey, I'm trying to find a performer, how could I help? Um, you can come to the summer reading office hours and share your ideas or things you're trying to work on with other youth librarians and myself, and we can offer you ideas and tips. Um, so December 12th, it'll be offered from 11 to noon and January 9th from 1.30 to 2.30. But you can look at all of this on our website as well. But I just wanted to make sure you guys take a peek and see what's coming down the pike. Well, we've made it to another, another session of Check It Out. Um, also, don't forget... We will return Tuesday, December 19th from 11 a.m. to noon for another session of Check It Out. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I hope you found some great books to order for your Baker and Taylor carts. And I will see you live and in person next month in December. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day.